Blog Talk Radio. I was so impressed by the way the Kircher family handled this terrific, horrific crime, the murder of their daughter. They were so stoic and so elegant, if you can use that word, in their grief. And they didn't seek out the media, and they didn't want to talk to anyone, and they didn't have a story to get across. They just wanted justice for their daughter. And it was such a contrast to the American sort of in-your-face public relations campaign where, you know, if you ask for an interview with one of Amanda's parents, they would say, well, I didn't like the story you wrote last week. I think you, you are, you know, I, you're not telling the story we want to be told. So, no, you can't talk to them. And that's, a, a you know, a very influential way to control the media by controlling access to information and access to sources. Mm. O.J. Simpson murder trials. O.J. Simpson in the United States many, many years ago. And I remember at the time thinking, wow, that must have been hard as a journalist to cover that because it's such a sensational trial. Then to find yourself in the center ring of a media circus is daunting. Those of us who live at the time, those of us who understood the language, we were sort of in some strange way at the epicenter of this media circus. And you felt sort of responsibility, and you also felt very strange when people from all over the world would descend on Perugia to cover the case, and you felt like they didn't understand it or that they were too influenced by the Knox family or didn't even mention Meredith Kircher's name at all in their stories. It was frustrating, but it, it gave me resolve to stay objective, to sort of maintain my theory that Amanda Knox could not be innocent just because of the passport she carried, but it has to be about evidence. And as someone who covered the trial and went to every single hearing in the first and second trials, I really did feel there was enough evidence to convict her, to find her complicit at least as having a role in this murder. Mm family hates me, absolutely hates me, and I got incredibly vile text messages all throughout the trial from Amanda Knox's stepfather. Those who supported her sent me hate mail, hoped, you know, wished upon me the same outcome that Meredith Kircher had, you know, terror, horrific sorts of things. Whenever I had a threat that seemed a little bit strange or too dangerous, I just handed it to the police in Perugia because I thought, oh gosh, you know, maybe I could be walking down the street. And who knows what would happen. There was a lot of anger towards anyone who was trying to be objective, especially if we were American. Hi, welcome back to True Crimes Podcast. That was a clip of an interview with journalist and author Barbie Latza Nadeau. She wrote the book Angel Face about the Meredith Kircher murder. And there she's discussing the PR and also her experience with the trolls and the, the abuse that she withstood for her objective um, portrayal, you know, covering the trials. And today we're going to be talking with guest Isabel McFadden about her experiences in when covering the um, Madeline McCann case. Hi, Isabel. How are you? Hello. How are you, Liz? Nice to for you to have me on. Yes, yes that, thank you. you know, just listening, just listening to the small, you know, preview, it just rings so true, you know, the the paid PR and you can really see the difference between paid PR and just people with opinion because people with opinion are just talking about their idea of the case, you know, what they've read, what uh they think happened, and they usually stick to the facts and uh, what they've learned about the case, how you know that somebody is a paid troll is that the aggressiveness. When somebody has um, something to lose, they become very aggressive. So, of course, when you're collecting a salary, you know, and you can look online, there's actually ads for uh, paid PR. For example, one that I just pulled today was, uh, all you need is a computer internet connection, and zero conscience. This is actually mm-hmm. the ad for this particular um, paid, paid, paid for trolling uh, ad. So, um, yeah, it's very obvious that it's become a moneymaker. Well, and not only that, I mean, yeah, they do. They are paid, and they deny being paid usually, so you, you can't be sure when you're dealing with someone online. But not only that, these PR trolls 
often take their attacks on people who disagree with them offline and into the real world. And that's when you're dealing with some serious um, harassment issues. That, and, yeah. um, so, and, and with the help of their PR firm and the money, they're able to do thorough research on victims or people that they disagree, who disagree with them. And you experienced some of that as well, right? Yes, yeah, so absolutely. So I first became, I'm uh, Portuguese. I'm Portuguese, and I, mean, I was born in Lisbon, Portugal, and I'm a Portuguese citizen. Um, I also have a French background uh, with my mother in France. Um, but I moved to the United States when I was a teenager, and, um, and I became also an American citizen, which I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of both of my nationalities. Um, when I first heard about the Madeleine McCann case, um, I didn't really go on social media and talk about it. I mean, I, believe, I, I saw, I watched everything, and I had satellite TV, so I would watch, you know, Sky News, and then I would watch Portuguese News, and there was a huge discrepancy in the two. And then, of course, American TV was just regurgitating whatever PR would tell them, and a lot of lies would come out. And you knew that this wasn't true, especially when the police files in Portugal were released. Now, I mean, um, just sticking to the troll idea, you know, like we have recently um, Amazon, they had to actually fire some of their distributors because they were hiring paid PR to badmouth other vendors. This is how ugly it's become. Um, when I first was harassed, I kept. Uh, all of these horrible tweets that came at me, Facebook pages written about it. Uh, actually, there is this one from a, a, a Amanda Knox troll who's actually crossed over. It. Uh, the name is Bourgeois View. But, you know, they change their names all the time. Who actually created a page just about me? And, of course, when you click on it, it's been taken down because I think a lot of these uh, uh, blog spots. They just they block they block these because they know that these people are continuously doing this this type of thing. So, uh, but I, you know I did go to police. They understand it very well, and uh, they did take a report. So I do have a report with some of the the most dangerous um, tweets that I did well, receive. Well, uh, they, they threatened my your children son at one and, point, right? Yeah, your tell yes. about the, the story about your child. Yeah. So so my son, uh, a minor. Um, was involved in this amazing program in Pasadena in geology, uh, Pasadena, California, home to Caltech. So if you want to go into that field, you know, and in high school you're uh, already kind of deciding what you want to do, there's all these amazing programs. And there was an alumni that was online that had been to, was an engineer for Caltech, and he started to tell me, oh, my God, really, that's his interest. You know, that was my major anything that you need, you know, yes, I know all about the program. I was one of the founders. You know, if your son wants to go, this was all about Pasadena. Now, I was having this conversation, some of it in public. We did take it into a private forum, but some of it in public. Um, a woman named Barbara Muller from the U.K., who used to be um, on, you know, trolling for the McCants like every day and night, um, she posted maybe like a day later that she was going to send one of her men to Pasadena, <laughs> knowing very well what, she, you know, the threat uh -huh. was to me. Of course, you know, some people are like, what is she talking about? Why is a man going to Pasadena? I knew exactly what she was talking about. She was talking about this conversation where I was saying my son would be alone in Pasadena, which is, you know, about an hour from my home for this right. summer program. So. Just, you know, this kind of thing. You know, my daughter did, uh, you know, the teenagers, now they do this, you know, challenge, you know, bucket challenge and, you know, eating, like, funny foods. And, and so they have a, a YouTube channel like a lot of the teens have now. It's just darlings, very cute. And, um, and all their friends, you know, they're all opening their own. And, and I log on to Twitter, and there is my daughter being discussed, being daft and dumb and, She's so pretty, but she's probably stupid like her mother. I mean, <laughs> just like amazing things. Then I sold, I, my, the, the craziest one was we sold a million-dollar home 
in Sill Beach when I actually went to put the home for sale, which we sold in one day, amazingly, um, they told me, they're like, you know, Zillow has these alerts. You have all these alerts from England. Like people had registered to find out any changes to my house. Wow, like, from the UK. Why this would anyone in the UK right care about what I'm doing, what I'm selling? I mean, and it just went on. Then they contact. They started to troll one of our investors, um, which was actually oh, well, a little bit frightening. I didn't mention it much, but so this is the yeah. kind of thing that they do. And uh, the more popular I became with millions of doll- uh, millions of viewers on YouTube on my YouTube channel, and because of me being Portuguese. Um, I started to speak. I started to have a lot of journalists calling me. I've spoken to a few police officers. Um, the head of the Portuguese investigation actually contacted me on some information I had. And as the the more information I started to get on the case, the worse it got for me. I mean, there's just okay. pages yeah. and pages written. <laughs> Oh, no, but go, going back to the beginning, though, the very beginning, because I want to point out another thing that's well known with these trolls, these PR trolls, is that they attempt to get people fired from their jobs. So I was wondering, you had a story about that as well when you first started out, how they tried to get you yes, fired? Yes, of course, of course. I mean, because, because um, my husband is self-employed. Um, we have multiple companies that are under trust, so it's very hard to find out, you know, what our companies are, but one of them is very public because it's international. And basically, yes, you know, we were getting um, messages on one of our company's uh, emails letting the company know that the wife of the owner was trolling the parents of a dead child, which was kind of funny because, not, not funny, sad, but they actually admitted in their trolling that Madeline was dead. Dead, which is something the mechanics don't, you know. But some of these paid trolls, they're just paid to troll, and they don't always um, portray what the, they slip. They slip because a lot of them are not very fluent on the narrative. So, especially Nancy and uh, Bourgeois View, uh, those two accounts, when they yeah, first Nancy came Parks. on and they yeah. did the crossover from the Knox to the McCann, which, of course, you know there, because why would you be, you know, trolling for two completely different cases? Uh, oh, yeah, they, they jump from the case to case. You see them, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, because that's, you know, that's what you have. It makes perfect sense, because for them it's just, you know, double business. double the fun, yeah. double, the, yeah. double the business. So yeah. when they first came on, their tweets were very erratic. And they did not, they were not, they were somehow the McCann narrative, but sometimes they would mess up. But then you started to see that people were other, the more experienced trolls were actually feeding them the correct narrative. And so their narrative, as the weeks went by, became more along the lines of, you know, what the the McCann narrative is, which is very, um, very strict, which is, you know, Madeline is alive somewhere, possibly in the hands of pedophiles, and um, and that the McCanns are still looking for her. Although, right, they have they have trouble keeping the story straight between cases. Yeah, it is difficult. Yeah, They're exactly, bouncing around. Exactly. So, exactly. So, how about harassment with fam? Uh, you you covered harassment with the family members. Um, other things they do. How about um, searching? I, I know I know a one instance where they would search. They go back and search you online, any of your social media. And I know there was one uh, crime writer that they found an old old blog, like on MySpace or something like ten years old when she was very young. Mm-hmm. She had written something, and they took that information and threw it in her face present day on the on social media and it was something you know to humiliate her so these these are the kinds of things that they'll do they'll they have all this time and energy to go back and research anything you've done and, and all your friends and family on sure so sure link, I linkedin and you know. i had that too um professionally you know um i was elected i was uh, a pta president of a school i was also secretary vp of uh different um communities and 
there is an article. So whenever there's actually quite a few articles about written about me in the news because I do a lot of charity for my husband's companies and you know just different things that I've personally done because uh, you know I, I I'm a stay at home mom so I, I try to occupy my time with um, different different projects and uh, so one of them there is a, a man at uh, my kids' school when they were younger who was found, not found, the case is still going on, but uh, it's absolutely true. He's pleaded guilty, I believe. Um, was molesting not the children at the school, but coaches from his, that worked for him. He was actually the PE teacher, okay? So when he was arrested, I'm the con- I was the contact for the school still. I don't know why, but, I mean, this was years later. But still, and their PTA president, it's still my name because I think I did the most um, social things um, and social projects with the school. So my name was still there. And I immediately got a call from a friend from the Orange County Register, which is quite a large paper, uh, asking me about the case. And I was like, you know what? I literally just watched it on TV seconds ago. Um, And my husband was like, doesn't that guy, like, they're talking about McGaw. They're talking about your school. Isn't it the PE teacher? And I said, yeah, yeah. And he's like, wow, that's crazy. So I really didn't know any much about it. So I said, you know, um, promote, you know, I'm completely shocked. This guy is very popular. He had been at the school for 25 years. He had been at the school um, doing the programs for 25 years. And, um, so people just loved him. So I said, you know what, I'm, I'm quite shocked. And, uh, you know, I promoted his programs because as PTA president, that's what you do. You promote the programs at the school, the arts, the sports. So the, so the, trolls, the trolls found out about this and claimed that you promoted a pedophile? Yeah. Is that what happened? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got How you. How amazing. Yeah. But, of course, I actually ended my sentence. I said, I'm not saying he didn't do it. I said, it's very possible. We don't know. This has just come out. By the way, not only was I praised by the principal at the school, also the mayor. He's like, thank you. Your interview was perfect. You know, you did not dismiss him. You, it was the perfect response because, of course, the city had been employing him for the summer school stu- no, for the summer programs. So they were just everybody was horrified. So, anyways, but well, I well, speaking of pedophiles, didn't you find out that the PR firm hired by the McCanns wasn't uh, Clement Floyd? You were telling yeah. me. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's just such a complicated. There is a a man who was a politician. He was also the grandson of Sigmund Freud. His name was Clement Freud, and he lived in. No, he did not live. He had sold the house in the town where Madeline died. And I don't like to say missing because I believe she died, and that's my opinion. But um, so he was now renting back his house, and he would go here and there to Praia de Luz, the town where Madeline died. Um, Clement Freud, after he died, was exposed as a vile pedophile of young girls, pretty young girls. And, and, and the McCann spent time with them instead of looking for their daughter. Yes. She, she so, was hanging out with this well, man. Well, they weren't expecting this to ever get out. But then, of course, it was all over the news because Kate McCann in her book discussed how uh, she just loved Clement Freud. He made her feel so wonderful and that he was very funny. And one time he asked her if, she was, uh, if all these stories about her were true and if she really was a, a nymphomaniac. And she bragged about this. So your child is missing. You hardly know this man who is a celebrity, and he's asking you if you are an infomaniac. What married woman would find any joy about something like that and write about it in her book as a positive wow. that he offered her um, strawberry daiquiris and he made the best risotto? Well, once it came out, this guy was just vile, and he was now friends with the McCann's or had been friends with the McCanns, and it actually invited them, people thought that there was a relation with the two, that possibly he was one of the big people that helped the McCanns get away with it. 
So, wow. yeah, it's very, yeah. I mean, that's part of the McKinnon story, and it's very complicated, but not just that. There is a, a man named Nigel Nestling, which he used to fundraise for the McCants. Vile, vile guy. But he did a lot of fundraising for them, and he had pages of fundraising for the McCants. And oh, ta- uh, he was convicted. Yeah, talk about the, uh, the of, fundraising of the yeah, go, so talk about the um, the money spent on uh, the trolls, how they got around that, the PR firm. This is the, the McCanns have um, a fund that has received four point something million dollars in total. Okay, most of that money is all gone. Okay, they basically squandered this on lawyers and lawsuits and God knows what and fake uh, PR companies and fake. Um, uh, um, investigators. They basically gave away $1 million to these fake investigators who have all been um, accused of committing crimes. It's just like amazing. It's like really, of all the amazing investigators in the world that a $1 million could pay for, you, find, you go and find two criminal agencies. It's like, come on. Yeah, you know, man, what's case happening the there? Same. Yeah, I think they're connected yeah, well, to a minute again, the same thing, yeah. yeah now, now go back because to the they trolls, want though. to look like they're searching. They look like they're searching, yeah. so they they go and find these people who, with this money thrown at them, you know, of course, I mean, and people are like, well, it's liable that you're saying that. It's like, no, it's not liable. Both of these companies that they hired ended up. Well, what about, now, what, what did they call the, the PR trolls, the online trolls they hired? They had a, word, a phrase for it, the, the money they used for that. It was like media. Oh, okay. So the amazing thing was that in the court, one of uh, the McCann's family members was asked certain questions. I, I, the judges were really onto this. They could, see, they could see it all, you know, rolling, and the PR was big. So the man ended up admitting in court that they had – a media monitoring unit composed, you know, of several people who basically... Media monitoring unit, uh, uh-huh. Yes, that's what they could have actually had a name for it. And not only that, there was a woman named Sarah Weirden um, who actually did a whole um, statement about how she was part of a group of 100 people. This was in the beginning. They had 100. Now I believe there's like six of them. Um and then they make different fake accounts to make it look like they're, you know, bigger and better. So right, but right. there's really only a few. Um, and so this woman said, you know, we're a group of 100 volunteers. We work social media. You know, we'll, you know, teach you what to do, blah, 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 blah. And that was, you know, made public also. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's organized. <laughs> I call it organized crime, really, because... You're yeah, they are criminals. Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, like the police said when I made my report, they said just keep everything. They didn't believe it was a threat, and he told me, Mrs. McFadden, all of this is happening. All of our children are being trolled because we just cannot. It's so difficult, and you know, from country to country, he goes, just find solace in the in the fact that nobody believes these people anymore. When you see the trolling of regular. People, and then you see that the person is maybe involved with a particular cause, you know, none of it is true. You just are like, okay, well, I, I, now I've become even, you know, arbitrary and trolled. You know, great. Now, but now go back to, to what like they did to you, reviews. though. Yeah, 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 the negative reviews, they do that. They, uh, now, Meredith Kircher's father wrote a book on Amazon, and her, the Mananox trolls would go and write horrible reviews on there, as well as anyone else who wrote an objective book about the crime. But I also want to talk yes. about... Um, Oh, well, I was going to say something <laughs> about the trolling. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, they, they sent you pictures of your house, right? Yes, okay. They so did. Well, actually, I reposted it today. Not just this house, my other house. Um, uh, just crazy things. Like, this is her house. Oh, look at her pool. Look at this. Look at that. In the beginning, they when I did my first video that my, in my YouTube channel that they trolled, Um, I had millions of views. When I first did that video, one of them was from my backyard uh, at the house. And and they thought, they couldn't believe that 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 was me. So they thought I was the maid. Somebody actually accused me of being a maid in my own house. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, I that's, yeah. Made. And uh and not a whole lot of European maids in California. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. But um yeah, and they're like, Yes, there's an Isabel McFadden in California, but that can't really be her house. I was like, well, because they are just, they're doing this for money. So they can't imagine that people from a substantial, hardworking background could be against the McCants because they are eluded by the money and by, you know, so to them, it's kind of a hate thing. Like if you have something, I must hate you even more and now try to completely destroy you. So, yeah. yeah, they try I mean, to accuse people enough. of being jealous. You must be jealous of them. <laughs> I, I like, no, I'm not jealous. And which is sad. Who would be jealous of a mother who lost her child? I mean, just just that concept itself would be horrendous. Right. It's like, why would anybody want to be in the shoes of Kate McCann? But they said that even because the McCanns were accused by one of their friends of some bad, untoward sexual behavior towards Madeline. And that's in the police files. It's the guest par statement. And they're doctors themselves. So the narr- I mean, this is very damaging to the McCann's, very damaging. And, the, yeah. and their uh, trolls hardly ever mention They don't like mentioning it at all. If you mention the guest bar statements, they, are, they go online right after your, your tweets, and they just tweet garbage and puppies and weird things in order to distract from that particular statement. But that was oh, you can send a link too. to that. I'm not familiar with that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. I have to send it to you. And so yeah. do you know what they said about the doctor's guest bar? It was a husband and wife who were doctors who used to be friends uh-huh. with McCann's. Um, right. Basically that they were jealous of the McCann's. So Ugh, two doctors were jealous of yeah. And not only not, this, because yeah. I ended up having some communication um, I don't want to go too much into that, but yeah, we only have a few minutes left. Huh? Uh-huh. This is an impressive doctor, and he comes from a family of doctors who is just—he had absolutely nothing to be jealous of. Yeah, no one's jealous of a couple of pedophiles. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. and it's just it keeps you know like this Nigel Nestling who was raising funds for the McCanns ends up with something like forty thousand um, indecent pictures of young children being raped in his on his computer and he was convicted wow. but then the judge let him go put him on i don't know suspended sentence or something like that yeah yeah just you so know what what, they, what what other abuse we only have a few minutes a couple of minutes left but what other abuse uh do, would you want to mention that people will look out for when these trolls these pr trolls that come after you and the experience I, you had what i recommend is to not answer them you know i i always tell a few people i said you know what just act like a celebrity. You know, celebrities never answer. They're, you know, they're too busy, you know, with, you know, having to answer to people. So don't answer. Just ignore. The truth is nobody believes these people, okay? The McCanns, I mean, you do poll after poll, and 90% of people believe that the McCanns are involved in the death of their daughter. So I said, you know what, It's they are acting out because they're losing. So just Ignore, ignore, ignore. This is what, I mean, there's a woman, Rebecca Sherlock, who's completely obsessed with me. I mean, the moment you announced, she was already, uh, you, you announced our interview, she was already posting mm-hmm. about her. Like, thinking yeah. silly. Somebody <laughs> you sent are it to celebrity. me, and I was like, oh, I think it was I think you are a celebrity. It to me, yeah. and I was like, really? And I said, I don't see any of this, because I have her blocked, you know, but it, once in a while, people, it's just, we just had a big laugh. You know, the woman is just desperate you know and she has mentioned before that she works for the McCann's and stuff you know and uh and obviously she needs the money you know I mean you can yeah. tell you know so and I sympathize so with them, that that they need but people need money and they need work but they're because, the, yeah but they go you know well, offline well, with it and harassing on it. yeah yeah you know because if they're getting you know a few hundred extra dollars every month you know which in Europe you know uh it's actually quite a bit um, yeah, it's a quite you know, it's on you, people, you're yeah. counting on that money every month. Right. Well, in, but there are reports that some trolls, if you really are on all day, you could make in the thousands, actually. 
it depending yeah. on how many you know accounts. And they do the research you, they do on people the way they search all your past pages from years and years ago and all your extended you know connections online. They're spending hours and hours and hours. And their personalities they're usually criminals themselves, right? We're thinking they're usually people that can't get real jobs, so they're. Uh, this is what I'm saying. This. this is why you know a lot of people say you know these are people on benefits. Sometimes even in the United States, there's been articles written that it's you know people who are. Uh, ex-convicts you know that's a great way to make right. money because you can't get a job anywhere and uh, right. so you know that's and that's it the, you know that's that's really it it's like that there's money in it so i literally just don't believe anything anymore like i actually have to research i look for legal documents you know things that i right. can actually you know grab a hold of that cannot be messed with i mean look at our media has become let me finish with this okay it should be illegal for anybody accused of a crime or be involved in a crime to use PR, that yes. should be illegal. Because if yes. you're a criminal, you should not have that benefit of distortion because it actually hurts the police investigation. And I will tell you, somebody in the police department in the UK told me, we're not in, interested in any of these lawsuits and PR. All of these stories are not true. And we're not here to debunk stories. We're the police doing an investigation. Because I asked him, I said, why don't you guys debunk? He goes, it's not our job. It's not our job. You know, recently with Robert Mueller, he had to finally come out because it was so crazy. You know, mm-hmm. this you know this new BuzzFeed. It's like, be responsible. If you think somebody is a, a, a criminal, let the real story come out. Do not allow for the, these PR companies to completely change the narrative. You know, I mean, look at and they're getting the, the PR companies are getting more clever now. With PR. Because they're, they're not only trolling online in comment sections, but they're also starting podcast shows like the Ad- Adnan Syed one and other things. So they're getting the PR trolls are getting more and more, um, you know, aggressive and, and trying to get more, you know, doing more things. So you really have to be of careful. Of course, well, now. it's become big business. It's become big business. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So keep a lookout on them. All right. Well, thank you, Isabel Fadden. We've run out of time, but thank you so much for being on the show. No, you're really welcome. Interesting. Anytime, anytime. Okay, All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, take, take care. care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.